Earlier this year, NASA began testing a new ocean exploring probe. But why is the world's largest space agency going under the sea? What we've discovered in this project is going to require cutting edge knowledge and technology to be successful. Learn about NASA's challenges in the deepest reaches of the ocean in this video. Can James Cameron help us find life on other planets? And why is the ocean the greatest mystery in the world? Let's dive into the video. We need probes to explore space because we can't get there on our own, but getting to the bottom of the ocean is a different story. Is there something wrong with this picture? It is possible for many people to conduct their own ocean research simply by diving in. A free diver can go 100 meters below sea level without a scuba set, but that's nothing compared to the ocean's terrifying depths, which are only 6 meters deep for a normal human without special equipment. Just 200 meters below this first layer, called the epipelagic zone, sunlight can enter and phytoplankton thrives, as well as the fish that feed on it and predators like dolphins and sharks. It's a long way from the first layer. Can humans, on the other hand, go any further? A new world record has been set by Ahmed Gaber, who dived to a depth of 332 meters. At this point in time, it's safe to say that he's entered the mesopelagic, also known as the midnight zone. From 200 to 1,000 kilometers below Earth's surface, it can be found. It's impossible for even the most advanced military submarines to reach this point. It's a barren wasteland with no sunlight, and the animals that live there are extraordinary. Because of their large eyes and bioluminescence, they've become accustomed to living in dim light. Furthermore, this is where 90% of the world's fish, or about 10 billion tons, can be found. The population of terrifying cyclothone alone stands at one quadrillion fish, yet it's just the tip of the iceberg. Since deep sea tunnels extend beyond many more kilometers and contain numerous secrets, what if we tried to explore them? How do we get to the dark and chilly ocean below if even submarines can't? The deepest point in the western Pacific Ocean is the Mariana Trench, which has a depth of 11,034 meters, with pressure 100 times greater than on the surface. To survive in this region, we'll need a unique watercraft, the most renowned of which is the Deep Sea Challenger, which was utilized by Oscar-winning director James Cameron in 2012 in an excursion to the Mariana Trench's bottom. The only manned submersible that has ever been there before was Triste. In 1960, a bathyscaphe carrying Lieutenant Don Walsh and Jacques Picard, an engineer, became the first vehicle in history to descend to the ocean below. This journey has been repeated by 13 additional people, which is 10 times the number of astronauts who have traveled into space. The Hadal Zone is the deepest portion of the ocean, ranging from the 6-kilometer mark to the very bottom of oceanic trenches. Life forms that have adjusted to existing in such a setting look like a product of some wild imagination. For example, these disco jellies, or even this snailfish that appears like a water dragon, or, or these fish that belong to the genus of Ophidian and look as if they've been turned inside out. Scientists haven't employed piloted vehicles, but rather advanced and remotely controlled ones to investigate them closely. They can dive to the greatest depths and stay there for a long period while receiving commands via long cables. Yet even they sometimes fail to survive severe conditions particular to the ocean floor. In many ways, they're even more deadly than those of outer space. In 2014, an underwater vehicle, Nereus, operating under the US flag, went down to the Kermatic Trench located close to New Zealand. It was simply broken apart at a depth of roughly 10 kilometers because of the enormous pressure. At that time, it was the only working aircraft designed for such tasks. Losing it caused a protracted gap in related investigations and hindered development. It seems that we've tried to bite off more than we could chew, but there are other oceans in this globe too, and they're even more inaccessible and much, much less friendly. So why are extraterrestrial oceans significantly more mysterious than our own oceans? The surface of Europa, Jupiter's satellite, is made of water ice. According to specialists, this ice sheet has a thickness between 15 and 25 kilometers, and under it, there's an ocean. 
Astrobiologists believe that life may exist on the satellite's surface near hydrothermal vents that emit the satellite's interior heat. This form of life could be similar to that found in the deep waters of Earth. Furthermore, Enceladus, Saturn's satellite, may be livable at times. Stream jets generated by internal heat break through the ice covering its poles, and a space probe called Cassini revealed that they contained water in 2018. However, to detect life there, we'll have to send a nearest like probe to the depths of both satellites, but the ocean of Enceladus must be roughly 30 kilometers deep, while the waters of Europa must be between 60 and 150 kilometers deep, which is 15 times deeper than what we have here on Earth. What can be hidden at a vast depth like that compared to this? James Cameron's voyage seems to be a cakewalk. Such a mission demands considerable preparations, and that's why NASA has started practicing deep dives on Earth. So how is this space agency planning to study the strange undersea pits of our planet? We've entered the coastal water using scuba sets. We've reached the depths of Bathys Caverns and still, we don't truly know what lies in most of the water territory. At the time, roughly 80% of the ocean remained undiscovered. These ocean sections are named the Bathypelagic and Abyssopelagic, or the Midnight Zone and the Abyss. Highly specialized species resistant to high pressure, for example a tripod fish or a deep sea angler, are just a small fraction of the deep sea world we've managed to uncover, given zero visibility. NASA came to the rescue, and they've made it possible for scientists to conduct research in the Midnight Zone and the Abyss, which was previously impossible because submersibles can only operate for a short period under extreme pressure. Using sensors and cameras from the Perseverance Mars rover, they built an underwater drone called Orpheus that can look at rocks, shells, and other submerged life forms, as well as create 3D maps of the ocean floor. Syntactic foam, a floating composite material containing tiny glass beads, is used to make the 250 kilogram probe more durable. It looks like a lot of fun and I'd love to go for a ride. The bright flashlight helps it conserve energy and take high quality photos. At the same time, many details for the Orpheus were borrowed from the bathyscape used by James Cameron to descend into the Mariana Trench. Thus, I think it means that we'll be seeing mysterious species being discovered very soon. There is no way to know how many of them there are, or what else we might discover in the depths of the ocean. If our probes are being sunk by something as large as prehistoric shark, or by Atlantean people who don't want our robots destroying their secret city, or even aliens who are doing everything they can to remain undetected, then who knows? Just remember that if you stare long enough into the depths of the ocean, the ocean itself will stare right back at you. Is it possible to travel there without wearing a protective suit after all of this? Let us know what you expect to see in the ocean by leaving a comment below, and we'll see you next time, only here on Quest, where we bring the cosmos to your screen.